Now what I'm going to paint today is one of my favorite scenes. A windswept tree on a rocky hillside. It just speaks so much in northern Ontario. First thing I'm going to do is I'm going to figure out what I want as my focal point, and then I'm going to crop in on it. I use this cropping tool to help frame my scene. I use it both in uh, the studio and out in the field. You take it and you look through it at your scene. You move back and forth till you find the right cropping for your scene. I've pinned the picture up above my easel as if I was looking at it in real life. Um, I use a small sketching pad. That's where I'm going to draw my value sketch. Now to me, the value sketch is one of the most important things you can do when creating a painting. You can use them when you're in the studio and you can use them when you're out in the field. They answer so many questions and solve so many problems. This is my finished value sketch. There are four values, black representing the darkest areas, the white of the paper, the lightest, a light gray and a medium gray. All of the values in the scene have to be forced into these four values. It means making a lot of decisions. Try to join shapes together to make big shapes. With only four values, a lot of things have to go together. Big shapes will start to appear. As you look at the scene, it helps to squint. This reduces the number of values you can see and eliminates detail. Big shapes reveal if you have a good composition or not. If the composition is not good, either fix it or find a different view. Keep at it until you find a composition you feel will work. Sometimes two areas will have similar values, but should be separated. Push one darker or lighter. The sketch will show other problems that need to be solved. Trees leading the viewer out of the picture, objects that detract from the painting, and any other things that can be fixed. Now I take my sketch and transfer it onto the board. Now when I'm transferring onto the board, I'm looking only at my sketchbook and what I've done there. I'm not actually looking at the scene. Because if you look at the scene, you're going to start re-sketching it based upon what the scene shows. But your sketch is where you solved your problems. If you go back to looking at the scene, well then you'll be right back to before you solved the problems. Which is sort of counterproductive. There'd be no point in doing the sketch if you didn't solve problems during the sketch. The transferred sketch indicates where elements go, their size, angles and positions relative to each other. As you paint, you continue to interpret the shapes as they play off each other. Okay, so we've got our sketch in place. We've done our value sketch. We've transferred it up onto our board. With that done, now we can actually start painting. Because I'm painting on black, which is probably not what you're painting on, black's a little tricky to paint on. Normally, if I was painting on a lighter board, I would start with the darks, move to the midtones, then go to the lights, then go back and go through the routine again. But in this case, I'm starting on dark. So if I, if I actually started with my dark areas, uh, you wouldn't see what I'd done. So I start with the mid-tones on this. And the way I, I do things is I recommend that you start with your focal point. In this case, the focal point is going to be here, the base of the, and the tree and this, this rock bit. And the reason for starting with a focal point, that's sort of the star of your painting. And like in a movie, you have to have a good star. If you don't have a good star, nobody's going to care about the movie. The supporting players, which are the other rocks and the bit players, the, the foliage and the sky and the water, things like that, they don't matter. You can't, you can do a beautiful job of them, but if, if the star is no good, it doesn't, it doesn't matter. 
And what you do with the star informs what you do with the other pieces. If you start, like, say, with the sky, then everything you do has to live with that sky. Why should basically a bit player dictate what, what everything else should be? We start with the most important bit. And I'm going to use um, a magenta green mix, which may sound a bit bizarre, but a magenta and green um, form really nice neutrals. Now I'm painting the trunk as a series of straight lines. The reason I'm doing that is because if you look really carefully at branches and many other things in nature, you find that they are a series of straight lines. So you can paint them actually pretty quickly that way and fairly accurately compared to what you'd do if you tried to create them in sinewy sweeps. Things in nature rarely are in sinewy streets. You have to make a decision too. This was sort of an overcast day, but I'm going to paint it as if it was a sunny day because I've been that spot many times. I know what it's like when it's sunny. I can see on my picture the various parts that are lighter, which would be the brightest bits, and I'm going to make them brighter. My brush strokes, I tend to make directional here because these rocks had a sense of direction and flow to them. I'm having the light come from this direction. So what I'm doing is I'm just putting a bit of a highlight along the trunk of the, of the tree. Just gives it a bit of three dimension, even if it's fairly subtle. One thing I don't do is mix up a big puddle of paint and really smoothly and then put it on. Um, one reason is with acrylic it'd dry up on you. But even with oils I don't do it because then you have a tendency to get large areas of, of monotone color. Quite often I will just take a, a bit of the master colors, in this case it's the phthalo green and the magenta, and use it together and have them mix on the board rather than pre-mixing. It's a way to get more subtle, more subtle color. I've added a third color into the mix, the naphthol red, to imply a change in the rock. Because these d rocks did take on a different tone, different hue, depending on the way the sun was hitting them. Because in reality, th these rocks are quite, uh, quite mixed, had many colors in them, which, as you got further away, sort of blended into this gray look. But as you got closer, you realized how complex colors were and seeing that complexity or creating it on the canvas requires bold differentiation otherwise it all sort of blend together and become this this gray mass but we don't want a gray mass moving over to the other side of the board i'm going into shifting into a fairly different 
here. Because the rock was a bit different. It had less striations and more sense of granite-like composition. So there was less directional pattern and more random pattern. As it went further down, it became darker and bluer, but still random. Well, that's all for today. Um, I'm going to finish this in another session, and it'll be posted up in my uh, YouTube space. I hope it's been helpful, and I look forward to your comments. Bye.